Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, the Supreme Court has handed down some major rulings. We'll be talking to a nationally known expert next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, if you've been watching the news in the past couple of weeks, you know that the Supreme Court handed down some major rulings. In fact, the rulings kept coming out so quickly that I don't even think the media could fully digest them before another ruling came out. To talk about that, Naeem Sakia, he is a uh, attorney at large and he's licensed to practice all over the country, including the Supreme Court. That is correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. Supreme Court. Um, so let's talk about some of these rulings. I mean, uh, there's almost too many to get into in our show, but what are some of the ones that really hit you? Yeah, so lately, um, in the last uh, perhaps 10 days of June of last month, uh, this year, uh, Supreme Court handed down many rulings which will have very consequences, uh, a lot of consequential uh, rulings, including the ones where they struck down uh, Joe Biden's loan forgiveness program. Uh, they also upheld Joe Biden's immigration policy. They opined about the discrimination lawsuit, which was dressed up as a First Amendment right lawsuit, where um, a potential website creator would be able to refuse service to those couples who do not agree, or she does not agree with their religious beliefs. Uh, there have been cases where um, affirmative action has been impacted. So there are so many cases which have such a large impact or the potential of having a large impact on the U.S. society that I think that is something which has to be looked at, which has to be understood by the public at large so that as they say the voting and the votes which are cast have consequences. So when we go into the voting um, season next year, uh, we basically have full information about who we want to support and how we want to live our lives. Sure. Well, let's take one of them, um, uh, student debt, because that impacts so many Americans. Uh, what's your feeling about what the court did? Well, so uh, Biden administration, uh, Joe Biden, when he was campaigning for presidency, he basically made a promise that he is going to help a lot of people who are literally drowning under the, the education college debt. And he basically authorized uh, the Department of Education to go ahead and forgive about $400 billion of student loans. Uh, he was sued and um, uh, the court struck basically a fatal blow to that, that program where they said that the Department of Education is authorized to modify the loan program, not completely change it. So they said that whatever they did was actually overstepping the authority the Congress had given to the administration. And that program basically has been shut down now. So it would have impacted a lot of people, including those who may have up to $20,000 in student loans. That would have been wiped out completely. Now that is not going to happen. So a lot of people have to make those payments now, which they had been uh, allowed to suspend for the last two years, ever since the COVID happened. So that is something which is uh, really reverberating in the in the student community and those people who have the loans. Um, it would have helped a lot of people. And Mr. Biden has actually said that he's going to find different ways, other ways to keep that promise. Okay, let's talk about immigration, uh, a topic that you know very well. Yes. Uh, what happened with the Supreme Court on immigration? So in the immigration, um, Supreme Court basically sided with the Biden administration saying that the states have no business trying to modify or trying to force their wishes on the federal government in terms of executing the immigration policy. The little background is that uh, Biden administration has 
prioritize the removal proceeding saying that we are going to prioritize certain people, for example, terrorists or criminals who are out there to destroy U.S. or at least put harms in society's way, those would be the people first who would be the enforcement priority. And the other people would be at the lower level of that priority. The states of uh, Texas and Louisiana basically sued saying that this kind of prioritization is illegal, or at least that's what they were hoping to get declared. And they were saying that the administration should not be able to prioritize. They should actually enforce the immigration removal orders or laws against everybody. But the court sided with the Biden administration saying that just like every other agency which has the capacity to prioritize their own agenda, not exactly agenda, but the resources, they should be able to do this in immigration arena as well. Sure. Well, I want to talk more about your practice. We're going to pull up your website. And as we scroll down your website, I know you practice a number in a number of different areas. Um, what percentage of the work that you do would be co uh, considered immigration? I would say about 70%. Okay. Is immigration related? Um, bankruptcies is not another area where we focus. Employment discrimination or the discrimination against people who are protected in employment places or workplace em environment. We represent plaintiffs in that area. We also do um, franchise law where we basically help people branch out from their location to other locations by franchising their businesses. Sure. Now, you've been practicing since 2007. I'm going to put you on the spot. If you look at your entire legal career, is there one case that stands out in your mind, one, one that you feel, feel like, man, this is why I got into this line of yeah, work? Yeah, so there was an unfortunate gentleman in Atlanta. I represented him. Uh, he was picked up by immigration for removal after spending about 35 years in the country. That case came to me back in 2010 when this gentleman was actually accused of defrauding um, lending it, uh, institutions. You remember there was a meltdown, uh, housing meltdown, uh, financial meltdown, and the loans which were perhaps obtained for uh, buying homes where people who are not qualified for that. Um, he was uh, an unfortunate tragedy or unfortunate uh, episode of that situation uh, where he was not allowed, in my view at least, to present his side. And uh, somebody who was representing him before me <clears throat> were not able to get him the justice he deserved, and he ended up getting removed from the United States, and his family was heartbroken. So sometimes the miscarriages of justice happens when people are not able to secure proper representation. Um, I was able to help him out. I was able to bring him back, actually, and uh, the court actually apologized to him. Wow. By, uh, in an open court, saying that a miscarriage of justice was done, uh, there were multiple factors to that, including, for some reason, the judge who actually handed out the sentence in the beginning, uh, she retired and the subsequent judge who handled the case was of the opinion that uh, perhaps the judge was too harsh on you, wow. meaning the client. Well, that had to feel very rewarding. It did, yes. Outstanding. Uh, you're also very popular with the media. We're going to pull up uh, the, the YouTube channel that, where you have all of these media clips. And as we scroll down this, uh, I'm just very impressed. I know a couple of years ago, you and I had a chance to work together. And you were one of those people that I could call at the very last minute and, and say, hey, uh, Fox needs an expert. <laughs> what are you doing? And you always said yes. So, yeah. Did it feel good to be able to educate through the media that way? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, after every show we did, uh, I did receive numerous calls and messages, people looking for help. And somehow they felt that perhaps they can get some help from my firm. So that was a very rewarding experience. Thank you. Well, you do a great job explaining it to the layman, which I imagine you have to do that every single day. When somebody comes into your office, you're, you're trying to break down law into the common man speak. Absolutely, because the law essentially is for the benefit of the common people. When somebody who is perhaps more knowledgeable in that field tries to impress the person who has come for help, I think that is counterproductive. Yes. Uh, there's really no reason for somebody to try to expose uh, their own grandeur, sure. perceived grandeur perhaps, on somebody who has come to actually seek help. So it's better that you communicate with whoever is walking your door um, to be able to help them. And the first 
a step towards that is proper communication, sure. thorough communication in such a way that they understand where they stand and how they can be helped. You also talked about uh, discrimination in the workplace. What's a typical case for you <clears throat> when it comes to employment law? Well, so uh, unfortunately, discrimination is still occurs. Uh, sometimes it occurs very uh, nakedly. Sometimes it is subtle. So whenever there is an adverse action against an employee of a company which has given many, many years to that employer, if they are removed from their position, then we have to understand that uh, work basically becomes an identity of a person. And if they are deprived of that position or their work, then they feel lost. They're completely disoriented. They don't understand what is the purpose of their life anymore. So that is the very first thing which we experience when we interact with people who may have had adverse action taken against them. So we try to calm them down. We try to basically tell them that there are other things which they can, they can look into. There are other venues for their own expertise to be expressed. And then obviously we look at the legal merits of the case before we uh, try sure. to help them out. So in the little time we have left, if somebody is watching this and they say to themselves, I've just found my attorney, what is the process like? Do you get on a Zoom call with them or you meet them in person or what happens? <clears throat> so we do both. Mm -hmm. uh, people who are local, obviously they are welcome to visit our office. Uh, people who are remote at a distance, we do virtual meetings all the time. I think COVID has basically normalized this virtual and remote interaction. So we do basically both. Um, it's very simple. They can communicate with us via phone or send an email or go to our website and send a message. We communicate with them. We respond to that, try to understand what their situation is. And then if we feel like we can help them, we can schedule uh, a lengthy conversation with them in person or virtual, both. Outstanding. You've been an amazing guest. We're going to have to have you back again soon. We're going to end with the website, which is sakialawgroup.com. Uh, the great Naim Sakia. Thanks for coming Thank on the you. show. Thank you very much for having me. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.